Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 31 of Merchants of Novigrad, a podcast where we discuss everything went. My name is Weisberg, and today with me, my partner in crime, Hesser Tavern. And as you guys can see once again, we have a very unique guest, the incredibly talented motion capture actress, Jujana Ratz, that you might know as Oriana from The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. How are you doing? Hello, guys. How are you? Doing great, doing great. We doing are happy great. to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. We are we are very excited to have you on the show. And I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Before we get into it, a couple of words uh, to our chat. Guys, uh, if you'd like to stay in touch, also off stream, you can follow us on Twitter at Novga Podcast. If you have questions for Zhuzhi, you can ask them in chat. And Hester, as always, has been charged with the task of collecting the more interesting ones. And also, if you don't have the time to watch right now, this episode is going to be uploaded on YouTube, Spotify, and a number of other platforms, either tonight or tomorrow. And with that being said, let's get into it. Question number one, um, you know, this is our usual what have been up to segment. And, you know, these are also unusual times. So I would like to ask, uh, how's work been? Considering Corona pandemics, lockdowns and all that jazz. Yeah, well, I've been really, really lucky to, I mean, during the pandemic, uh, because I was working kind of all the time. So uh, because uh, before pandemic happened, I, I mean, one month before it, I had an accident. So I wasn't ab uh, able to act for almost a year. Uh, and, uh, but because pandemic broke out, uh, a lot of studios, for example, in the US and UK closed. So, uh, and we were, uh, still were able to be opened up. So I was doing a lot of, uh, motion capture shooting as a first AD. And, uh, it was during all summer and on the summer I had, uh, the surgery, uh, for my knee, so I was able to stay at home and recover. And um, it took about a few months, uh, and uh, I started to go back to um, doing some dubbing because that's also what I do. And after that, I got a job on uh, the Moon Knight series as a VFX. Uh, PA and after I get promoted as an assistant coordinator and it was during my whole last year nine months more than nine months it so, yeah, sounds like was, that year was really packed yeah a yeah. busy one right yeah yeah so I was really 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 lucky yeah especially when you said that uh, you had a surgery on your knee and I can imagine for a motion capture uh, actor that's that's a really difficult thing to swallow because you are out of action for a while yeah it was yeah when uh when the accident it, it was also happening in the motion capture studio where we were shooting some stuff all right um uh, so i have it in 4k and everything i have the motion capture data about it and it's it's horrible <laughs> to look at look at oh, because God. i had i i had a my my acl has been torn and you know it's it's really, really nasty to look at. Uh, but um, but yeah, when I got to the got to the doctor and he told me, okay, recovery is nine months, and I was, what? I mean, I cannot do that. I need to work. It's it's just that's that's my life. So so yeah, and pandemic happened. So either way, everything closed down. Every theater and and even the dubbing studio is closed. So I had nothing else to do is just I was really lucky that uh, the motion capture studio was able to uh, stay open so but yeah um, so yeah and it was really hard as an actor to okay I need to let this go for at least for a while I know it's a serious topic and I'm definitely not supposed to joke about that but I can't help myself you said you have this whole accident in 4k you should have asked the crew to edit it as if you took an arrow to the knee. Sorry, one more time, please. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have it in 4K. Yeah, you should, you should ask but... the studio to edit it as if it looks like oh. you took an arrow to the knee. 
Yeah, that, that should be yeah. that should be a great advert actually of your works you should post it somewhere <laughs> oh well i mean i've showed it to to my doctor and he was really really i mean he was obsessed with about it so oh, wow. uh, he asked me to send him the data i've sent him the data because he knows what motion capture is because you know motion capture starts from um uh, I mean, they started it to record uh, things for healthcare and uh, for yeah, and so for those stuff. So he was he was really excited, and so that's why they recorded my whole surgery. <laughs> Your whole surgery as well. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, my whole. They recorded my whole surgery. Yeah, and wow. when when they came to, I mean, when. They came after surgery, the doctors and the students and everyone. They were just referring to me. Oh, yeah, she's the, the video girl who has the video. <laughs> she's the model, right? Yeah, yeah and it was, it was really funny. I mean, that's, that's part of your legacy, right? There's going to be a yeah. whole generation of students who now yeah. know what the torn ACL is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you said something about dubbing and, and, and voice work. And, you know, I, I scoured through your social media and there is that Hungarian audio story called Audubon. Yes. Can you yeah, tell us is. something more about that? Is this going to be also available in like, with English subtitles or something? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Uh, I've seen the first episode uh, there that it has a subtitle, may, I think, maybe in YouTube, uh, but I need to check it. But yeah, it's a sci-fi uh, voice uh, drama, and uh, we are still, I mean, it's still in the making. The seventh episode is going to come out next week, or, yeah, next week. Uh, and there is eight episode, and it's, um, it's about a, a boy uh, and they are living in a different on different uh, planet, and Earth is a really utopistic uh, planet at that moment. And uh, there are just only creatures called absorb absorbs, and uh, they are kind of like mutants, and they are eating uh, eating people uh, to survive. And they are, um, they were, um, because, because fertility uh, was a big problem. And so they, uh, they changed a lot of uh, women uh, to these absorbs. And yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's not a really nice and heartwarming story. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, and this young boy, um, unfortunately, um, Stuck, uh, stuck on, on this planet, and um, I play the queen, the queen, uh, and she's an absorb, and uh, they are helping out each other uh, during the episodes, and we we know uh, from, I mean, while the time's happening, uh, we are get to know what happened to her and why is she an absorb, and uh, we start to know a lot about her uh, path as well so so yeah it's really exciting this caught my interest um is it based on novels movies or any other source or is it created from the ground up yes it was it was uh the the director of it and uh and i he's a guy who found me on twitter and uh he's not a young one yeah, and uh, yeah, so he's he's a really brilliant uh, writer. I mean, uh, it's just he has a lot of ideas. Uh, he he's writing constantly. More, um, I mean, we are planning to do another uh, voice drama, and he's just he's full with energy and full with ideas and he he wrote in the in one year he wrote at least uh three or four uh short films as well or or at least uh scripts for it and uh yeah he's just he's just brilliant so yeah, yeah he created the whole thing with some other guys and uh they wrote eight episodes but they have a plan for next season as well so it's it's really cool what they do 
Yeah, it sounds yeah. very exciting. And the description of the world, you said it's not a very nice and, and heartwarming place. We are Witcher fans. We know how that feels I like. <laughs> I know. So, so that sounds very exciting and, you know, right down our alley, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope, I mean, uh, I, I need to check if there's more episodes uh, with uh, English subtitles because, because yeah, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's a little bit probably hard to listen to it because it, it's all in Hungarian, of course. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice story, uh, by the way. Um, it's not heartwarming, of course, in a, in a sense, but uh, it's really utopistic. And, uh, and also um, quite depressive as well, but, uh, but it's really nice. Yeah. They did a really great job. I mean, it's, it sounds like something that cyberpunk uh, fans would also enjoy, right? So I did some research here on YouTube as we speak, and uh, it is he here, but unfortunately there are no subtitles. Maybe I need to do some more digging, but I'm going to post it anywhere, anyway in chat. So whoever wants to do some more digging, guys, feel free to do it. It's going to be there. Oh, I mean, perhaps. I know it's... Yeah, yeah, I on, know, it's, it's, yeah. sorry. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's... Have you found it on YouTube as well? Because it's it's definitely there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I, I, I guess I'm going Hesser to will... the guys to translate it quickly. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. We have Hesser right here, uh, the mastermind behind all the languages. So uh, just translate it, yeah, Hesser. Just... just just do it right away as yeah. we speak. Just hey, give then. me fifteen minutes as I learn Hungarian, right? And yeah. Then yeah. Can go Easy. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, this sounds very exciting. It's it's time to move on. Uh, we'll, of course, be talking mostly about The Witcher uh, during the podcast. But uh, before that, there is something we'd also like to ask about you, and and that's your more recent projects. Because as I already said, I've scoured through your Twitter and I've seen uh, a lot of motion capture. I've seen Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I've seen Final Fantasy Fifteen. Uh, a lot of other video games. So. Um, what can you tell us about these projects and what else is in the pipeline? I mean, what is in the pipeline, I usually cannot talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I just had a shooting uh, the day before yesterday, so I'm really sore. <laughs> uh, my muscles are killing me, but uh, I cannot talk about that. Uh, that one, um, uh, yeah, I did... I think because I'm working as a motion capture actor for nine years now. My very first uh, job was uh, was The Crew, uh, the second, uh, the video game. And um, that was the first time I got to know what the motion capture was. And it was a really new thing for me. Uh, and yeah, I did a lot of Assassin's Creed uh, trailers, uh, did a lot of Call of Duty, uh, League of Legends. Um, I don't know, there was a lot of smaller projects uh, as well. Um, so yeah, I think I did about 25 or 30 uh, movies or, or gigs. So yeah. Um, and, um, and yeah, I, and also I'm working as a first AD, um, in motion capture, uh, and we did, uh, a big job for a big Japanese, uh, company. Okay. <laughs> That's it. I don't know when it's going to come out. Uh, and we did, and we were shooting it for five months, which was a really long, uh, shooting and, um. Yeah, I was first AD there as well. Um, so yeah, uh, and also a lot of stuff for Ubisoft. For example, in the Valhalla, I also um, I I was playing in the in the trailer as well as Valka, the shamanistic girl. Uh, it's she had just a few moments, and uh, but we also because of the pandemic, we did a few cutscenes. Uh, we recorded it here in Hungary, and uh, I was first AD there, which meant I was 
the only one on the stage directing everyone, which was really, uh, really scary. <laughs> and the client was online. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was really great. So yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it does sound like it. And, and you mentioned some really big franchises, right? League of Legends, yeah. Call of Duty. Uh, even if you are not a gamer, these are the titles you are going to know. Like, for example, from, from yeah. TV ads or, or ads in the street. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's very impressive, I, I, I have to say. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, in part, I know, but, you know, it's, um, motion capture is a tricky thing. Because, uh, for example, on IMDb, if there is a, I mean, if there is a big um, um, video, like, for example, um, oh, yeah, Rainbow Six Siege also. And, for example, for that, we did a seven-minute or so short film uh, called The Hammer and the Scalpel. Uh, and I was playing Dokebi in it. and. Um, and and usually and even for for example in the in the Witcher they usually if there's a character uh, they don't show who played the motion capture they show usually who did the voiceover so it's really tricky and uh, now there are a lot of stuff a lot of lot of uh, videos when they the same person does the, the motion capture and the voiceover as well but still if you do just a motion capture, you won't be that recognized or you won't end up on the credits. So yeah, it's, it's tricky. But I know that I did really big stuff. Even not the credits, that's, that's weird. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah it, it sounds familiar because I remember there was a detailed um, description of your work at the set of The Witcher 3. Uh, with all kinds of scenes from motion capture and editing and whatnot. And if you scroll down the section to the comment section, people were just, were just asking, okay, you wrote about this girl's work without even mentioning her name. Like, who, who is she? Yeah. What, what's her name? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's, um, it's also contracting between the studio and the client. It has nothing to do with me. And I cannot do anything about it because, uh, yeah, it needs a unity or something to change it. And they are trying to change it in the US and in the UK. Um, but I'm not sure if it's going to reach to this part of the world or who knows. So, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Yeah, we should start a petition, definitely. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm fine with it, by the way. Well, at least as you know, it's it's well. I well, I don't know, but I'm guessing that it's probably well paid or paid well enough. <laughs> yeah, well enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing okay. it's all right, even if you're not like you know, mentioned in the in the credits or or you're not I mean, given the credit you want. I I mean, yeah, it's um, Witcher is a little bit different uh, because. Um, because the character looked like me, and and that's a little bit different thing. But doing just motion capture is just uh, it's just like shooting in a film. So you get the same uh, payment, and that's it. Yeah, I think if it's any comfort, um, you know, if you look at a lot of historical works like paintings, sculptures, architecture, quite often we don't know who made them. And yes, we are admiring the work. So in this case. You can see all those people, you know, being being amazed by your work without even knowing who you are. Yeah, yeah, and I know what I did, and that's what matters, and that's it. And if yeah. someone is not sure, they can ask other people if I did that, and they can tell them, yeah, she did it. So sure, that's it. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, before before we get to the core of this episode, I'm not sure if you guys know, but not too long ago, I'm talking about maybe a month ago. The Witcher franchise turned 35 years. It's, it's been with us for over three decades. So my question wow. to both of you is, uh, how did you get exposed to Sapkowski's work and, and when was that? Yes, sir. Would you like to start? 
Uh, well, uh, sure. This is the question that uh, people usually uh, ask. And I was actually taking part in another interview yesterday with, uh, with Mr. Buja, who is uh, really exposed in the Gwent and the Witcher world. And uh, yeah, the thing is that um, it was pretty easy for me because uh, I'm from Poland. So uh, I was exposed to Sapkowski's work at the very beginning when it was even posted in, you know, uh, some small newspapers here in Poland, so uh, from, the, from the very, very beginning. And uh, I mean, the perspective changed because I, I've read those books um, in the past and uh, I, I reread them recently as well. And uh, the perspective was different for sure. Uh, I, was, I was amazed by, by the, those works in the past as a, reading them as a kid. And I was, you know, imagining all that stuff in a different way. Um, and what we see now, uh, you know, uh, highly affected by the games and uh, the TV show now, uh, it's it's ob obviously way different. But but still, I, I remember the first feelings when I was reading that. That was something new. That was something uh, rough comparing to the the Western fantasy world. I would say because the Western fantasy world turned, um, you know, uh, was pretty much um, I don't know how to even describe it. But it was more of a fairy tale, right? And uh, the Witcher world was uh, was way more dark, rougher, right? And and there was more violence to it. And this is this was something that was exciting for for a kid, I guess. Uh, nowadays, I don't have this perspective, right? But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> for me, uh, the Witcher came into my life with the the. Night to Remember trailer. Before that, I know nothing about it because I'm not a gamer as well. Uh, and um, I'm, I, I don't know. It's just, for me, gaming wasn't an option. I tried World of Warcraft, uh, I don't know, <laughs> more than 10 years ago, but I just got bored. And when I was a kid, I was watching my my uh, brother playing Medal of Honor and uh, Tony Hope Pro Skater, and I was just sitting next to him and rooting for him. Oh yeah, yeah, you go and shoot them, shoot them. Uh, but uh, for me, it, it wasn't really an option, or I just wasn't really interested in it. Um, and when I started to motion capture, I realized that okay. Um, if I'm not playing it because I don't really have the time and energy to play, um, at least I should I should read about it. Um, and when when we did uh, The Witcher, uh, I didn't read much that time because I was uh, really active in theater, and uh, and I was working in a different city as a puppeteer. Uh, so it was really rough to go to Budapest um, and get back to the other city to play. And, um, and it was a lot of, a lot of uh, traveling, so I didn't have much time to, to look about it. Uh, but when we did um, the trailer, and after that, uh, CD Projekt decided that, okay, uh, this was a huge thing and everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we should include this character into the game. Well, it changed a little bit the perspective. And uh, and after that, uh, we did the Gwent as well. And um, and yeah, when the game came out, my first thing was okay, let's see what this character was in the game and how did it, how they, what they, what did they wrote to her? Because you know, it must, it can, it could have been anything. And um, and yeah, and I watched her whole story, and it was it was so nice and heartwarming. I mean, it's it's a really great story which which they gave to her, and and after that, I I um, I read the books, not all of them, I think three, and um, two weeks ago I started to reread them, and of course I watched uh, the whole, the two series of the TV show, and. Yeah, it's something. It's something really different. It's it's like a yeah, it's a fantasy, but more like a Viking vibe. So uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a really really cool uh, word, I think. And it's and it's more 
uh, expressed in the books than in the and in the and then in the games than in the in the series. So hopefully it's going to be expressed more in the series as well. Um, but yeah. All right. I'm glad to hear that we have a similar vibe about uh, about the TV series as well. And Matt is going to agree, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Uh, I, th I think the topic of TV series topic. is going to come up naturally along the way. Mm, yeah. But your your story, uh, in a way, sounds uh, like a lot of other stories out there because you said, "Oh yeah, I didn't really know about the universe until The Witcher Three when I started working on this." On this game but for a lot of people they they had no idea what the witcher universe is until the witcher 3 came out and it you know it it scored yeah. all the awards there are in the yeah. industry and people are just oh this is an amazing game and after that yeah. they started playing the previous games and reading the books so so i think that if you if you look at for example google results who googled the witcher like 2015 when the witcher 3 came out that was probably the start of the spike yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you know uh that was some sort of a niche book in Poland as well, right? So it's all thanks to the games, basically, that, uh, you know, it got all the yeah. fame in the world. Yeah, for, for yeah, me, the story and... was somewhat different, though. Um, I have family in Poland, so I remember being a kid, you know, traveling to Poland to see that distant family. And there was this distant cousin, and he was like, dude, dude, you have to watch the series. What series? The Hexer. It's about the witchers and monsters. It's really cool. And we watched a couple of episodes because he uh, he recorded them. Uh, it was like 2001, 2002 maybe. And I watched this trigger episode and I remember being terrified by that. And then I started reading the books. So uh, for me, that was a pure accident that there was somebody in my family that I was visiting at the time who told me, you know, there is this witcher thing that you have to watch. That was way before the games even came out. Uh, so yeah, I, I wasn't, you know, in the position of, 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 of Hesser just naturally growing up with The Witcher. And it, for, for me, it also wasn't just The Witcher 3. I was, I was somewhere in between. Yeah, but it was also at the very beginning, right? So you have, like, the initial uh, perspective of, uh, you know, have, being able to you know, actually imagine your own world of The Witcher, right? And then see that world of the CDPR's imagination. And uh, yeah, compare it later on, right? Although the TV series, yeah, but the, the TV series at the very beginning was something that let you, you know, uh, imagine your own because you didn't want to actually accept what you see on the screen. <laughs> because that TV series was uh, more of a mistake. But I, I, I see a lot of people liking that one. Honestly, in terms of, I you know, think that right now there is some sort of revival when it comes to the yeah. original Hexer series. Like people watched the Netflix series and they were yeah. like, "No, this is not The Witcher," and let, let's watch Hexer, like the old Polish TV show. That's how yeah. it's done. <laughs> because I I remember, and that was that was a crucial comment because when talking about the Hexer, people always say, "Oh, the dragon looked so bad." Like there's a dragon in that series and it looked god awful. Uh, but now people, you have people saying, "Well," Our dragon looked awful, but it was a dragon and it did dragon things. And if you compare it to the Netflix dragon, it even didn't look like a dragon. So I guess we won that one. I'm going to be the next one to watch that series. <laughs> it's on YouTube. The Hexer is on YouTube oh, cool. with, with, with subtitles. And oh. Unfortunately, the quality is a little bit lower, but then you have to remember it's a show that's over 20 years old. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But now that we are talking about The Witcher, uh, you know, let's let's start with 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 our questions for this segment. And the first question is going to be, how did you get to shoot for CD Projekt Red? How did that happen? I mean, mm, mm. oop. Yep, yeah, that's that's a oof. <laughs> yeah, that's a big. I, th oof. I think uh, Buja doesn't want Jushi to talk about that. <laughs> uh, what happened? Is it me? Uh, I can hear you, but we cannot see you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I didn't do anything. It's fine. It, it can be some random Discord <laughs> lag. We're, you know, we're just we saying it's City Project Red trying to, you know, keep those yeah, secrets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, usually, I mean... Um, because in Hungary, it's the whole. I need to start from this, uh, because um, it because usually when you are thinking about acting, okay, probably they have agents and agents got them uh, one project. 
and maybe I don't know half a year later another. It's uh, here in in Hungary is different. We don't have agent system, and uh, and in motion capture it's also different because in the in the UK and in the US they are casting uh, people for different kind of roles uh, for motion capture. Uh, and here is totally different. I got into motion capture nine years ago uh, with the with the crew. Uh, we did it uh, with a different company called Puppet Works, and uh, the guy who was directing that um, those cutscenes, he he got to he went to work uh, with Digic Pictures, and he recommended me as an actor. So they called me to go there. So I did a, a a trial shooting or something, and well, they were satisfied. So they started to call me again and again and again for nine years, and uh, almost every uh, I, I worked on in almost every um, project they did. Uh, if they needed uh, an actress. Um, I almost did every character, um, female character in those movies. Um, and that's how I ended up doing Witcher as well. Uh, because doing motion capture, uh, you just need a person who can act and uh, who, can, who can move uh, good. And kind of that's all, which is a, still a lot. Because, uh, you know, even if you're an actor, it doesn't mean uh, you can move good. I mean, define good. Uh, <laughs> good means uh, that you are uh, capable to do a lot of things uh, with your body and uh, sell a lot of different characters with your body, just with your movement, just with your walk. Um, and so that's that's how I ended, ended up there. And... Uh, we started to shoot uh, the trailer and um, we did, I don't know, three or four days uh, of shooting. Um, first, just one day and a month later, another day. So it's it's a kind of long process. Um, and um, and when they, they were uh, searching for a face to put on that character. Um, I don't know how I ended up on the list, but I but I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it wasn't me. They in at Digic they were just calling me, okay, uh, what the, we were we would like to present you to the client. Uh, so maybe you can be the the face of the character you just did in movement. And I was okay, let's try. So they so we did um, if uh, just a quick photo shoot, and um, I just had to do a vampire vibe, um, just from from innocent uh, to a really um, bloodthirsty vampire. That was that was the photo shoot, and I was happy because okay, I I was watching when I was younger a lot of vampire movies. I was really obsessed with them, so. It was a big fit for me, um, and they chose me, and kind of end of story <laughs> because, yeah, they chose my face to the to the Oriana character, which was which was really cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a great story actually, and I, I can imagine that not only you know, uh, obviously the perspective as you mentioned, uh, being able to you know pass some emotions with your movement. Uh, but it also is probably you know, physically demanding, and I, I can imagine that you have to keep in shape all the time. Are you working out, for example, for for your job, or how does it how, how does it look like? Uh, well, now it's a bit different because <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned reason I'm not really working uh, as an actor anymore. No. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, working out is not really my thing. I think it's. Uh, yeah, of course you need the muscles, but I prefer doing yoga more uh, because that teaches you. Yoga teaches you a lot about your body and how you should use your body, and that's more important than muscles. Sure. In motion capture, you need to run a lot. 
and walk a lot and uh, crouch a lot and those kind of things. Um, to me, it was a little bit different because all the fight scenes were done uh, by stunts. Uh, I'm working with uh, stunt guys in the motion capture who are who are wonderful. They are great. Even if I want to try to do the stunt, it won't look as great as they would do because they are they are so so professional and and they are just they are just capable of massive things and they are huge. I mean, I love them because they are they are really really good and um, so. I just usually uh, doing the the more acting stuff in motion capture, and uh, with just small movements. Of course, I can do a fight because I I realized okay if I want to do more and more stuff, I need to learn it. So I started to do kung fu, for example. Um, oh, nice. Uh, but um, but yeah, it's um, you need to stay in shape of course, but uh, stretching and uh, learning how to use your body, it's, I think for me, it's more important than uh, building muscles. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, we are going to ask about uh, whether or not you, you, you cast for both the cinematic and Blood and Wine, but we already know that you didn't. You, you initially cast only for the cinematic. But my question is, Normally, you only uh, do motion capture and the character doesn't look like you. So when did you know that Oriana in the cinematic is going to look exactly like you, that it's going to, going to be you? Was it, was it right away? That, did they tell you, okay, this is our job description, you are doing motion capture and the character is going to be modeled after you? Or did, did it come up later? Uh, I don't really remember. It was it was more than seven years ago now, so I don't really remember. A night I mean, to remember, uh, and yet we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I I don't know. It happened really quickly, um, and you know, for um, because uh, when they decided, okay, uh, they're going to in the cinematic, they're going to give uh, my face to the character. We just, uh, it was, okay, so you, we need to scan you. And it was a really long process, scanning, um, seven, eight years ago, uh, seven years ago, because uh, it took about, I don't know, three or four hours. And uh, I was, and, and we were able to do that only after 10 p.m. because I was working in Seattle. So I was there until 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. or something. And it was a really long process because they need to download all the data from, I don't know if you're familiar how a, a photo scan booth looks like. Nope. Not really. <laughs> well, uh, it's um, around, I don't know, 45 or, or 50 uh, um, photo, photo machines around you. And it's uh, taking pictures at the very same time, all of them. So uh, they are taking pictures uh, almost 360 uh, of your face, and you have dots uh, oh. all the way, different with different kind of colors uh, representing your cheekbones and your muscles and everything. And uh, they are doing. Uh, they you need to you need to do a lot of. Um, facial expressions like like this and and uh, so a lot of things like this and there are more than 40 faces so and of course one face is about one minute because uh, if you if you move your head is fixed and because if you move, uh, a few pictures might be blurry, so they need to re redo that. So it's it's a really really hard process to do, and um, and yeah, and they they scan me for that, and um, and after that, they CD project decided that okay, we would like to put this character into this into the into the uh, game and after that uh, came about came the discussion okay so you need to buy my face which is really uh, weird 
but yeah, they bought all my data, and um, and that was a different discussion. Um, so yeah, and I was really great. I'm I'm really grateful for C CD Projekt because uh, they paid me a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah so um so yeah and 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 um you know i'm not really a i mean i think by now you can tell that i'm not i'm not fangirling about myself oh i did that and i did that and woohoo that's so good and that time motion capture wasn't uh, wasn't a big thing i mean it was a big thing but not that big like today because today everybody wants to do motion capture. Eight years ago, it was different, and and ten more years ago, it was really different. And um, and I was okay, another job, next. And um, and when when my face ended up in the game, uh, my boyfriend, who uh, I mean fiance, he was working in the game industry as well. Uh, we've met there, and he told me, hey. This is a really, really big thing. So you should appreciate it, and you should, you should be proud because it's you're going to be in a game, and thousands of people are going to watch your face, and 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 it's huge. And I started to think, ah, oh, well, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I I don't remember that particular night. It's just uh, these are these were the the bigger. Uh, happenings around the whole um, Oriana thing. All right, All right, perfect. Oh yeah. So as a follow up, I uh, we would like to know a bit more about the background and learning that character, and and we would like to ask you about you know, um, how much did you know about the character before that, right? And was there any influence or you know or the traits of the character that uh, you were you were able, for example, to modify? to add something from yourself. And we know that you like vampires already, so we are going to scratch out the question from the chat because there is one person asking about, you know, the roughness of vampires and maybe there was something that you didn't like about this scary picture, but I'm guessing that you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> you liked the idea, right? Yeah, I liked it very much. And, um, well, um, I didn't really know much about it. I just uh I just got the script and uh I was able to watch it and and of course there were some instructions from the director. Uh but um the whole vampire ness uh yes I I as as I mentioned I I'm was obsessed with vampire movies <laughs> and um my biggest inspiration was Akasha from Queen of the Damned. Um, I know a lot of people hate that movie, but I'm <laughs> obsessed with it. I love it. And, um, and, and I tried, I mean, not tried, but uh, she, was, she was the biggest in inspiration because she has a really snaky movement and, and, uh, and she, was, she was sexy as well. And uh, they wanted uh, kind of the same for this character. Because you know she's dressing. I mean, she's throwing her clothes off and everything. So, um, so first, I had to be, I had to be a really nostalgic um, and you know the small uh, puppet in my hand, which was really funny because it was just foam, nothing <laughs> <laughs> like it. It was just a piece of foam and two pieces of foam was uh, at attached to it. And that was, that was it. And, <laughs> um, and I had to play that. Oh, I have not good. Mem I mean, memories are flowing through my head and everything. And, uh, and yeah, and, and in a second I had to switch into more seductive, um, vampire or, or something. And, uh, well, kind of, that was, I knew, um, that this, the, this vampire thing was, the, was the main thing that you need to be kind of innocent in the beginning and really, really rough at the, at the end. Uh, so you are able to attack Geralt and um and yeah I think that that was kind of kind of it so I don't know it's just um 
it was just a great experience because uh, before that, I was, I mean, before The Witcher, I was finishing um, acting school just two years. So I was really new to the industry. And at the very beginning of my career, I ended up in motion capture. And uh, I'm, I'm really a big fantasy fan. So when I found that, okay, this is going to be something different because in the crew you were you need you had I had to play real life character like I don't know a girl who's breaking a car and something like that. And it was okay. This is fantasy. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> so I was I was really excited about it. And uh, and yeah, I don't know. It's I I wasn't the best student in acting school because I was kind of shy and uh, and afraid of myself and afraid of the whole industry and I don't know afraid of everything I wasn't really confident but um but their emotion capture I was just able to let it go uh and uh and it came out really good to me and of course for uh for the character as well awesome and and what what makes it more comfortable than you know, let's let's call it standard acting. I don't know. <laughs> it's even possible for me that uh, the language mm-hmm. changed um, because I was thinking about thinking a lot about this, and um, and I don't know. It's just it's just something really different for me. I mean, um, acting in English. Sometimes it comes much more natural for me than acting in Hungarian, which is a really weird thing because usually it's the other way around mm-hmm. uh, for for most of most people. But I don't know. For me, it's just I don't know why. Uh, and and also um, maybe because it was fantasy, and uh, fantasy was was uh, really close to my heart, and uh, because I was reading a lot, watching a lot when I was a kid and uh, and I was playing a lot. For example, I always played Sailor Moon because I'm a really big Sailor Moon fan <laughs> until this day. We all and, were. Uh, sorry? We all were big Sailor Moon <laughs> fans at some point in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I was playing a lot. Um, in my head and also at, at home playing around uh, with this character. So I think it felt just more natural than, for example, playing a Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare, but um, it's in a way it's easier than playing Shakespeare because Shakespeare, it's, it's huge and massive and, and his character are so complicated. Uh, video game is a little bit uh, easier but um, my main thing was always, and until until this day, um, to not to show them. I mean, to add something extra for every character I play, uh, even if it's just uh, like in the Gwen, just sitting at the table playing cards. That's all. But <laughs> it's not just that that's all. And of course, you know a few things about the character, but put something in it which which makes it more lively and for that uh, for example my greatest inspiration is um, Penelope Cruz in the movie Volver uh, and there is a scene where she's uh, sitting at the table uh, with her um, uh, with her uh, sister and they are talking talking a lot and uh, she's just eating something and um, Scratches are falling out from her mouth, and uh, of course, because it's some pastry or something. And she just talking, 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 and looking down, and and th- does this on the table to um, get away from those scratches from the table. And that movement is oh my goodness, <laughs> it's so brilliant and so so natural. So I always try to do something like that in in every character to to find what it's what feels really natural to them. Um, and I don't know how, how I ended up doing, doing this. It's just, um, I just felt, started to feel really confident, only in motion capture. But in there, I started to feel really confident after a few jobs. 
All right, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to follow up on something you said uh, a minute or two ago that for some reason you felt more comfortable, uh, you know, doing this in English this time around. Uh, there is actually this theory that your brain kind of associates one of the languages you speak with a certain social situation. So maybe in your case, acting, you know, your your brain associates or fantasy or acting with English. Maybe maybe that's why it was more comfortable. It's possible. I don't I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked up um, reasons because I didn't start a search. But but yeah, it's it's possible. Everything's possible. I don't know. It just felt feels more more natural to me, um, which is really weird. It's it's really weird, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it 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 can be a reason as well. Yeah, you can you can compare it, for example, to me and Hester talking about Gwent. I I can't imagine us talking about Gwent in any other language than English. It just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But moving on, uh, you already said that you normally have stunts, uh, but. I'm curious about this specific uh, work. How much of you de- is there in, in the night to remember and, and how much stunt work was added later? Do you also do the, the fight scenes with Geralt or... No. No. So when it's, Oriana disappears uh... in the fog, that, that's where you, your, your part ends and then we have the fighting yes. sequence and then yes, we have dead Oriana and, uh... and that's when you appear again. Oh, and uh, yeah, um, no, the fi- the fight scene. There, there is a massive fight scene in it. I mean, uh, with uh, round falling and everything. I'm I'm not capable to do that. Um, so yeah, it was done by uh, a really talented stunt guy called uh, Josef Fodor, and uh, he's also working for DJ for years now. Um, it was, I think, one of one of his first job. Uh, there, I think that was the first time I've met him there. Um, but he's really great. And uh, Geralt was played by uh, Gabor Seman, uh, who is who is I think he's he's the biggest star for me as a stunt because he's he has a really nice movement and and he's he's just perfect for Geralt. That's why it's really hard for me watching Harry Devil. <laughs> Because he's really different than my my imagination, and um, yeah, they they did uh, the these two guys uh, did the fight scene, and um, I I also did some some stuff uh, when um, when she's changing uh, to the Bruxa and um, and some stuff when she's. You cannot see that, that those part, but she's walking on uh, on the beams um, or something like crawling on the beams. I did some of that as well. And uh, when she's coming out from the uh, from the barn, and uh, Gerard shoots shoot him, a shooter, and uh, those crawling, I did a few of them. Uh, but I, everything everything else, which is the fight part, uh, is done by those two guys. And uh, yeah, and I and of course the animators because uh, it's a little bit uh, speed speeded up the whole um, movement of of the Brusa, um, and they did a massive job for that. Everyone, everyone, especially the animators and 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 everyone who who was working on The Witcher until this day, you can tell that it's it's really 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 good job. Uh, the the facial movements and the eye movements and everything is just is just huge. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I can I, remember watching that for for the first time, and uh, I was just simply amazed by the animation. That was something uh, and seen before, I would say. And uh, yeah. I think that it, it's still like uh, you know a, a model for for the animators to learn from. I'm guessing. Yeah. It's yeah. Just like you and, in, in the hospital, right? <laughs> With yeah. the knee. Yeah, exactly and they the were working on it a lot. I mean, um, I think they worked eight months, month or something. It was just oh, yeah. just post production, eight months, and it's it was massive. Yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive. 
All right, but uh, speaking of, of the, the animation and, uh, you know, getting the recognition, I, I'm guessing that after this, uh, you've probably, uh, you know, got uh, a lot of recognition in the world and in the industry. And uh, what, what is uh, the impact of, of this video and you being Ariana, playing Ariana, uh, on your future, right? Did you have some other job perspectives or, or maybe was it on the other hand limiting uh, in some sorts because you will be, you know, associated with this character and maybe you will get something similar? Uh, I, I want to know your, your opinion on that. Well, almost nothing. <laughs> I mean, there, there was, I mean not much recognition because uh first of all uh motion capture wasn't that huge that time mm. and second it's well um most of the people don't didn't really know that uh who was the face for it because uh on on IMDb only the voice actor ended up and mm. she's brilliant Laura Doddington, she is she is so funny. You, she's on Instagram and I follow her, and she <laughs> is, oh my goodness, she is so funny. And um, and uh, yeah, I, I was contacted her once, uh, and she is really nice as well. Um, so yeah, there wasn't much impact when when a few years. And and I wasn't really on Instagram and everything, and I wasn't really on social media at that time. But when I found out that okay, people are doing cosplay, and I was, <laughs> what, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm a cosplay character, and and oh my goodness, and um, and and it's really funny because I've already met one of the cosplayers, uh, and she is. Um, you can find her on uh, Instagram as Fersh or something, uh, Mary Mazakova, and she is she is one of the cos one of the first cosplayers uh, who did Oriana cosplay, uh, and we are still chatting. And she's really nice, and she visited me in Hungary a few years ago, and uh, she's just awesome. And she would be a gr really good actor if uh, she would have the opportunity to play and all of her cosplays are just wonderful. And um, that was the first thing. And um, and there was one time uh, I got cast uh, to do a pl PlayStation uh, trailer uh, for those We Are Googles and we did a... Oh my goodness! A Borderlands uh, trailer, live action trailer, and uh, in the beginning there is a girl who's playing with the PlayStation, and it goes to live action uh, Borderlands world, and I was the girl who was playing the PlayStation, and uh, and when we finished the shooting, we had uh, because we were shooting it in Croatia, and uh, at the end we had. Uh, nice dinner with the PlayStation guys, the producers, the director, the DOP and everyone. And one of the guys told me, oh yes, yes, I know you because you were in the Witcher trailer. And I was <laughs> okay. What? And 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 when and the and when the casting was um he told me the he told the director that oh she's good. She's good because she was in the trailer and she was wonderful. And okay. <laughs> thank you or something and uh i think that was the biggest thing uh which happened but um but yeah i'm i'm i mean r regarding the jobs uh as as i told you earlier it's it's different here in hungary because uh they just keep uh calling me because they are satisfied my work so, so it's is different, but uh, nothing huge international recognition or something. No. Yeah, this is probably connected with what you you've mentioned before at the beginning that you know there's there's just not enough credit, and and there's probably that that's and the reason mainly, right? Mainly, and because I'm living in Hungary, and and that's it. If if uh, if I was a girl living in London, probably it would be different from the very beginning. 
but I'm I'm a girl living in Hungary, and um, it's just it's just different. I mean, you yeah. never know. In the end, uh, The Witcher is is is, is Polish work. Right and and you I know. know you know Sapkowski could have said that as well like I'm a guy living in Poland who is ever gonna know about my works yeah and look yeah. how I mean, that played out for him yeah yeah I know it's just it's just I I don't mind it at all I mean I'm I'm happy with my life because I I achieved a lot of things uh, I think and um, and I did a lot of stuff uh, and. Yeah, I know that I did a lot of huge, huge characters, uh, and and in motion capture, I I'm a veteran or something almost uh, with nine years. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. I mean, uh, I wanted to, I really wanted to, be, because now I'm fine with it. But a, f- a few years ago, I really wanted to break into the international industry and everything. But um, it's really hard, and especially because I have an accent, which won't go. I mean, uh, I can work on it, and I can I can learn. But still, if they if they want to work with a uh, an English actor, they will. Even if I fit to it more, uh, they are going to work it with an English actor because it's just. Um, is just easier and the whole motion capture industry is changing so quickly and they are not just i mean a lot of projects uh they are doing performance capture which means the actor is going to do motion capture for the character do are going to do the voiceover for the character they are recording um their voices also on the spot so it's just they just need a full people mm. Not just not just the movement, not just the uh, not just the sound. They they need full people for full performance capture, and uh, and this is just that's it. Yeah, probably the options are limited, right? For for actors with with an accent. I mean, sometimes you need a person with an accent, but on the other hand, uh, an English actor can learn the accent in a way, right? And, yeah, which and is play it. yeah, I know it's um, it. I think. Um, Thinking about how the whole industry is working right now, and how all the protests about if you are a gay, if there is a gay character, you should call a gay person to play it, and so on. Um, it should go for accent as well. Uh, if there is an Irish uh, or not Irish, a uh, Russian or uh, I don't know. Polish, you should give the role to a Polish, not just an English uh, actor who tries to learn that accent. But it's well, it's changing. The whole industry is changing in in this in this meaning. So, and we don't know how it's going to end up. And um, I'm fine with it. I mean, uh, I I let let that go. And even now, um, because motion capture the the biggest motion capture studios and are in the US and in the UK and you know Brexit came as well i tra- i was talking to um a motion capture agent and she told me well we are looking for uh mostly english actors who are on the spot and uh but it's but your what you did it's it's huge your cv is really long and it's impressive but probably I won't be able to give you any jobs because um, Brexit. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the sun went away. Yeah. But uh, as you said, the, the industry is changed because even if you look at um, Netflix's Witcher, there is so many car- uh, characters being played by actors from all over Europe. Uh, you know, Laszlo was yeah. being played by a Polish guy with an accent. Vesemir is being played by a Danish actor with an accent. Stregobor, also Danish actor. Um, Neverland by a Norwegian actor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So there is quite yeah. a few actors with an accent because uh, they are they are, they are Polish, Danish, Norwegian, probably a couple of German or or Dutch or Swedish actors as well playing characters. So you never know. There's actually a Swedish actress playing Bruxa in in the Witcher show. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, the first series it was shooted in Hungary. 
by the way. Oh, yes, parts of it were shot in Hungary, yeah, we know that. Yeah, and, um, and I reached out for the Hungarian uh, casting director. I told her everything about myself, who I did and what, yeah. who... Who I was playing and everything, and she told me, "Oh yeah, impressive. There are a lot of small, uh, small roles, so keep in touch." And nothing <laughs> happened after that. So it's you know it's um, it's not on. I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, uh, yes, who knows? Maybe. Um, but for example, um, who plays Vesemir Kim Bodnia? Yeah. He's the greatest actors of all i'm i'm in love with him i <laughs> he is my he is my favorite actor so i assume you are very familiar with the bridge uh, yes oh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show that that's how yes. i learned of kim Bodnia. yes he is i mean and also um first i've seen him in the pusher and uh, we started to watch the bridge and and i can tell you, and he's he's I don't know. I mean, I'm just fangirling now because, because <laughs> he is he is a really big actor. I mean, he's wonderful. With the things he can play with his eyes is just is just wonderful. So when I found out that he's going to be uh, in The Witcher, I was yes, recognition, recognition. <laughs> Thank God that that the industry recognized him because he he deserves a lot to do because he is he is really good so so yeah who knows maybe the creators of the witcher are going to find me after this interview and okay let's put oriana in the in the series i don't know everything can happen I yeah know. i mean there is gonna be what seven seven seasons of the witcher and there are actually actors who played both mostly voice actors who played both yes. in the games and yes. and in the Netflix series uh, with the most notable example being Mayanna Boehring who played Anna and Reda. Also, The Witcher 3 Blood and, Blood and Wine and who is now playing uh, Tisaya in... Uh, yeah, yeah. And she is the, the so show, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She is so I, good. I think yeah. she's one she of the stars so of the show, definitely. Yeah, yeah. She is... She is... She is... Uh, she's huge. And I mean, she... She's brilliant and she's sparkling in that in that role. So yeah. But speaking of voice actors, you already said that you talked to uh, uh, Laura Duddington, who who played Oriana, and yeah. and also a couple of other roles, not only on Oriana, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Um, how would you how would you rate her voice acting when it comes to this specific character? Because this character is effectively you. If you look at the character, yeah. you look at Juji. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so so how did she play you? I think I think she did a really good job. I mean, uh you know in um in video games it's really important um the voice actor because for example in um in the blood and uh wine um I'm in the whole Oriana character and everything that, that is hand animated. I mean, I haven't done anything for those parts uh, in motion capture. Those probably hand animated, or maybe they use some local actors to play some uh, motion capture, but I don't think so because it looks really hand animated. Um, and and if if you watch their faces, there are not much expressions animated. So it's really important how the voice actor uh, tells you the story, and uh, and and it's and it was just really nice. I mean, she did a really really good job uh, on that because uh, I was almost crying, <laughs> <laughs> and because you know I because the trailer is the the end of end of her story. And uh, we just uh, learn what happened before, and it was just it was just really, really nice. I mean, for me, I mean, they made a really nice character of me, and I'm so <laughs> happy about it. <laughs> yeah, also the time the timeline is quite interesting in there because you see Oriana for the first time in the cinematic, and that's the end of her story. And then yeah. they um they started working on Blood and Wine, and they basically started to work on what happened before that, because at the end of Blood and Wine, you have no notion of Geralt, you know, coming back to Beauclair to hunt Oriana. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah it's it's really it was yeah it's it was really nice job what they do um what they did uh with the whole character i think um and uh and they wrote a really nice story for it for her and um and yeah so i'm i was really pleased to see it because it's just it's just so nice yeah i can i can imagine <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, we also talked a bit, uh, you know, about recognition and you being recognized in some public situations as well. But but maybe there is something else that uh, you would like to mention that you were recognized on the street, for instance, or I don't know, maybe somebody uh, sent you some uh, DMs on social media, right, about your job. Maybe some, there is some story behind that. Yeah, um, a few people were texting me. Uh, there is also oh yeah there is a guy a russian guy and once he was sending me a package mm -hmm. uh he was really nice uh ivan he was sending me a package uh with um full of local uh handmade uh stuff um wow. and yeah he was he's he was really nice and he wrote me a really heartwarming letter and uh we were also chatting a lot about uh acting and situation in Russia and, and in Hungary, comparing. Um, and it, yeah, in, in social media, of course, it's much more easier to, to reach out and, you know, search for it. And there are, you can, you can find out who did that character because usually in, in Wikipedia or some, something or uh, they are link those, um, for example, my, I know that my Twitter is uh, linked the fan page of Oriana because I I've searched it sorry <laughs> <laughs> and um, but yeah on the street it happened once uh, mm -hmm. I was I was shooting a well some Norwegian series it's it was kind of like a um, Im improvisation stuff and uh, one of the guy weren't you the girl in the Witcher <laughs> <laughs> so that happened once and um and I have a really good friend um and um and he's also a, a Witcher fan and uh, on her Facebook uh feed uh Facebook always showed me up as a, a person to connect because I, we had a lot of uh connections uh through other people and uh and at the end we we ended up working together and uh, he was he was he was kind of fan girling about me <laughs> or fanboying about me because because yeah he he's a, a huge Witcher fan so so yeah I think it's but, called simping but... now <laughs> simping yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so but that's all that's all but all it's, right. it's it's really nice it's really nice yeah and weird uh, <laughs> and in the other hand. I think it actually surprised a lot of our um, audience when we, when we announced that you are coming to the show and that you are the actress portraying Oriana. Because I remember, uh, you know, it was it was only a couple of weeks ago, but I remember getting uh, private messages from from other people uh, in the Witcher community and the Witcher in the Gwen community, just you know, flat out saying, "What Oriana is a real person?" Oh yeah. And they were really really interested in in the episode. Yeah, I know. They usually people don't know that it's 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 a real person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. But it is. Hello. <laughs> um, moving on, and and this is something that even if you were people know, you also performed a Siri in the launch trailer for Gwent. Yes. Um. Do you know what Gwent actually is? Have you have you ever felt like, oh, maybe I should check it out, see see what the game is about? Um, I know it's a card game, but here is my little present for you guys. I started to play Wild Hunt. Oh, so, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I and, and I had my first uh, gaming party in. Uh, in one of the cities so and of course i lost <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh i have a brief um information about what gwent is but um but i haven't 
played Gwent, just Gwent in the White Hunt. And uh, so, yeah. And also in the, in the trailer, there is uh, a small part for Yennefer. I did that too. Nice. Yeah. Every female character I did. Even oh, wow. in the, in the, in the um, what is it called? Not the barn. What is it? When they are drinking pee. Tavern. Yeah. Tavern. Uh, As tavern. in Hesser Tavern. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the tavern, uh, every female character is me. Oh wow! Played, played by me. Oriana yeah. shape shifting. Dancing on the table, dancing on the table, uh, <laughs> taking beer to you, uh, to the people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. so follow up question. Uh, you know what Gwent is, obviously, as you already said. You haven't. You've, you've never played. Have you ever seen your Gwent card? Have you ever seen no. the Oriana Gwent card? No. Okay, Hesser. I don't think so. We need a link from Gwent one with the artwork. I can't do oh, it man. because I cannot leave the screen. That's how yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. setup works. Yeah. But yes, there is a card. There was an expansion in Gwent in March 2019 called Crimson Curse. And it added Ooh. a whole lot of characters from the Blood and Wine expansion in uh, The Witcher 3. And one of them was Oriana. Ooh. Interesting. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna send it in our Discord chat so that you can oh, see it. See. I'm gonna send it in our uh, <gasps> Twitch chat as well. It's, oh my uh, goodness! Really brutal, right? Ah, oh, it's so really epic. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. She's not that brutal, by the way. <laughs> but but it's it looks so good. I think Oriana wow. can be quite brutal depending on the choices you make. Uh, yeah, in, in blood and wine. But then again, yeah, you started possible. playing, so I'm not gonna spoil anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I decided and um, because uh, I started to reread the books because I read them a long, long time ago, a few <laughs> years ago, and and I decided, okay, why not try out the game? I have a good computer for it because most of the time I had the problem that I had, I didn't have a good computer. And um, because I had just old computers, but uh, for the Moon Knight, I had to buy a good one because I had to use it all the time. And and I decided, why not start it and we'll see. And I can tell you, I really enjoy it. I mean, it's um, the most um, the most interesting and uh, eye opening thing was that. Um, I'm, I'm, let me say, I'm playing the most easiest way, just a story, <laughs> nothing yeah. really huge and everything, but, um, but it's so nice. I mean, it's so, so impressive that all the story goes and the, the, the dialogues between the characters, it's so good and, and it's so well written as well. So I really enjoy it because it's, it's, um. First of all, it was a huge job. Second of all, it's really enjoyable, and it's and yeah, it's it's just great. So, yeah. I think your popularity within the Witcher community after this podcast is going to skyrocket because obviously you are already <laughs> existing as a character in the Witcher universe, and now you are playing the Witcher three, and you are a PC gamer. That's like <laughs> that's a trifecta. <laughs> well, we'll see. But yeah, it's a uh, Simps it's a fun arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really fun. I mean, I wasn't really a gamer. I know that um, a few years ago we did um, a trailer for a Japanese game called The Last Guardian, and uh, it was only for PS4, I think, or something. Um, and I really wanted to play that game because um, when we were I, we were visiting some friends and they had the, had the game and uh, they started to play uh, while we were watching it and it was it was oh my goodness I really want to play this but it's all only for PS as far as mm -hmm. I know and um, and nothing really other thing really interested me or something but. Um, but yeah, and now it's it's really um, 
it's really new. I mean, for me, uh, I'm really, really new to this 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 word, and I really enjoy it because, uh, yeah, this whole. I mean, I'm really at the beginning because other people are playing hundreds of hours in in Witcher, uh, but it's 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 really cool, and and Geralt is really cool. Also. <laughs> And and for me, for example, we, we, it was kind of the, the biggest thing in my last week that um, I was watching the series and I watched the, the, of course, the second season and probably it's not a spoiler, uh, but for me, and at the very end of the second season that we found out that the White Flame is Ciri's uh, father and I was, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> And I started to play the game, and in the I don't know, in the sir, the third thing was that okay, there, this is the white flame, and he's looking for Siri, and and he's the father. So everyone knew that that the white flame was Siri's father, except me, <laughs> kinda. Because and you was, said uh, you only read three books, but at the end yeah. of the saga, it is actually being revealed. Yeah. But to, yeah, to be, but to be honest, the... that's something that um, the games did not do very well because in the books there is only two people who know that Emir, you know, the White mm-hmm. Flame is is Ciri's biological father, and that's Geralt and Emir himself. Oh, yeah. So oh, okay. for the duration of the novels, uh, not even Geralt knows that. Like he knows Dooney, but he's never seen the Emperor, so he doesn't know that Dooney mm-hmm. is the Emperor. And okay. then you know, at the end of the books. Uh, they they meet again, so so now mm-hmm. so now he knows. So there is two people who know that. Not even Yennefer knows that. Not even Siri knows that. Oh, okay. So so that was kind of weird in the games that you start playing and suddenly it's like a you know rumor that everyone has heard somewhere that oh yeah this girl is oh yeah she's the daughter of the emperor yeah yeah you didn't know that oh weird like everyone knows, everyone knows that. Okay. Well yeah, but but it was for me it was. Oh my goodness! Everyone knows it, and I was sitting next to the series like, "Oh my god, reveal!" <laughs> and it wasn't a reveal for most of the Witcher community, and I was, "Eh, I'm a newbie. Sorry." <laughs> so yeah, it was fun. By the but way, I think it makes watching the series uh, a, a more pleasant experience if you actually don't know that much lore and everything seems new yeah. to you. Yeah, I mean, everything seemed really new to me because. I was reading the books before I watched the series a long, long time. I remembered a few stuff, for example, the dragon stuff and everything. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it's, yeah. But honestly, I, for example, the first series and first episode, it's not so good. <laughs> we are actually going to talk about that now because you read some of the books, you watched the series, so the question is, what are your initial thoughts on the written stories and the adaptation of the source material? I mean, um, adapting books and changing things, sometimes it can be... Um, it, it, it can be... Um, I can't say it. It's just uh, acceptable. Uh, the changes. Um, I haven't read that much books uh, from The Witcher. Um, I think it the series is not not a bad adaptation. Uh, regard. I mean, of course, if you are, for example, I'm. I can compare it, for example, to Harry Potter. Harry Potter. There are a few things which have been adapted really weirdly, uh, and a lot of. Um, Important information has been uh, left out from the from the film, which was in the in the book. And for example, uh, my fiance never he he cannot even watch the films because he doesn't understand the thing a lot of the times. And th- mm. it was the same with Game of Thrones. After a few series, he didn't understand what the f- happening. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, because there were a lot m- much more information in the books. Um, here is just um I just read let's say I just read the first two books and um uh there are a lot of different things, for example, even how Nivellan ended up uh in the in the series because it Siri is already there and nothing like that. But the store they kept kind of the stories uh of every 
side character. It's just uh, sometimes they put it in a different um, timeline, let's say. Um, but it's not so bad, I think. They switched a few characters and they changed, for example, in the very first episode, they changed a lot about... Uh, um, about uh, how things happened in Blaviken and um, who were the characters. They mostly changed those parts, uh, that they changed that character into a more interesting one or they just left out characters because it doesn't really serve the story uh, or it wasn't that much interesting uh, in spite of... Uh, and in, yeah, in spite of the... Um, film i mean the the series so i can i can i mean i'm i think it's acceptable um i had much bigger problems with it <laughs> let's hear uh, about I them mean, now sorry <laughs> let's hear about them now your bigger problems with the series well i uh let's say uh the i had big problems just with the uh, first season and the, just the first few episodes because the first season after the fourth episode it changes in the in the kind of good direction because it gets more interesting uh, the characters are much more uh, revealed what are their motivation and um, uh, but in the very first episode first of all the CG it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> and the first fight uh, of with Geralt and uh, the Kikimora, it was just oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> yeah, every everything was bad in that in that small scene. Poor dear, looked so bad, and um, and yeah, so it was the first first time because I had to watch the first episode twice to be able to continue. Um, and because the first time I started to watch it, I watched 20 minutes and I shut it off because, oh my goodness, I don't, I mean, I don't want to watch this because it's so bad. Uh, even the music in the first episode, it was, I don't know why, but it was so bad. Uh, I just realized it when I watched, um, two weeks ago that, oh, well, when Calante is, uh, is dying and everything and it was, why are we playing Disney <laughs> kind of Disney <laughs> music under when we are in a kind of really different story? So, and uh, and those changes, I mean, the end those are started started to change uh, throughout the more the the episodes in a good direction. And for example, I really enjoyed uh, the second series much more than the first. Um, Everyone was much better in it. Um, there are some unacceptable things like nail paint on Siri and uh, and lipstick all the time, uh, yeah. and uh, perfect Instagram look on her. But um, because she doesn't need it, because she's a good actor, um, she doesn't need it. And and I'm obsessed uh, with. Um, with the actress who's playing Jennifer, because she's so good. I mean, in, in the first episode, what she did is just, oh my goodness. I don't really like the look of Jennifer sometimes, but she is just, I don't know, she is just so, so, um, so diverse. She can do a lot of things and she is good in everything she does, every emotion and and um and she's just a really good actor so um when yeah after after a few few episodes it's just it's just i accept everything because there are really good actors in it and i enjoy watching it even if the editing is not so good sometimes even if the the cg is not so good sometimes there are really good actors in it and um for me, as an actor, is is the most one of the most important thing because um, that's the biggest part which which counts to me and um, which matters to me and um, I can go with the story because mostly because of them. 
Yeah, that that makes sense, and I think that you know, uh, the structuring obviously has been done to probably you know create an appeal for the series in uh, in a wider audience. Maybe you know that's that's my guess. Yeah. Uh, and and the pacing changes uh, as well with the story and and different timelines because it can be confusing as you mentioned in uh, in Harry Potter yeah. or or Game of Thrones, but but yeah. I, I think we can obviously agree, and the chat also agrees with most of your points here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. You, we actually started talking about the acting, right? And and I wonder uh, who, apart from the uh, the guys you've mentioned before, uh, caught your eye in, in the series. Maybe there were some, you know, hidden gems that uh, people don't really see, and and you, with your professional eye, can can you know uh, see uh, the, the professionalism in those actors. It's really hard because, uh, especially in the first season, there are a few people who I know, and they are mm. played uh, important character, kind of import, yeah, important characters. For example, um, there was a guy uh, when um, Siri um, uh, fled from Sintra, and uh, she ended up in the camp uh, with full of Sintrans. And uh, she uh, was sleeping with a mother with two kids. And uh, do you remember? Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. episode two of the first. Uh, yeah, season. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, and there was a, a young guy uh, who has been killed, and and he he said he was uh, really against elves or so, I don't really remember, but she, he was a blonde guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was playing with him oh. in theater. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I, I f first I didn't recognize him. Just a second, I, I know this guy, <laughs> and I had to check him on IMDb. That oh my goodness, I was playing with him in theater, <laughs> and yeah, that was that was that was real really funny. And um, uh. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I'm sometimes I can be really bad in names. Uh, what is the name of the forest where Siri ended up? Brooklyn. Um, Brooklyn forest. Brooklyn, yeah. yeah. And the and the commander of uh, the Brooklyn uh, community, uh, who not the not the the main Brooklyn women uh, woman, but the the commander. She is a really good Hungarian actress, by the way. And she nailed that character, and I was so happy because uh, she is she looks marvelous in 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 that as well. I don't know her. I I know her sister, who's also an actor, but um, but yeah, these are really small gems uh, for me because and also there is the guy who is uh, bringing that small cassette full of worms uh in uh, the final battle scene and it's and ends up in the ear of some characters that guy who's taking it he's also a, a hungarian actor um so there are a lot of gems even uh, mostly in the first season because it was shot in hungary um mm -hmm. but um but acting wise uh yeah for me Jennifer, Bao. <laughs> And because she is, she is so, she is so good, and of course, uh, Kim Bodnia. Thank God he's on it. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I know the those two, the act, two actors who are. And uh, first, I didn't really like Henry Cavill, mm -hmm. uh, but because I have uh, a different. Uh, picture of Geralt in my head because I had great actors with me playing uh, in motion capture Geralt because that stunt guy he's a really good actor as well and um, uh, but yeah and but after the second season I can tell that he's he's doing a really nice job with Geralt and after, and uh, because in the meantime I started to play the game and I was able to compare uh, Henry Cavill to the Geralt in the game, and and yeah, it's it's a it's a good match. 
I can I can follow it and um, or I can accept it because he is he is doing a nice job with it and um, and knowing that he plays the game or played the game and he knows a lot about it is just uh, is just so is just reassuring that he's he's doing a great job. Yeah, I, I can see that a lot of people are probably maybe not enjoy. I mean, they enjoy the acting as well, but they like his devotion, right? And they like him implementing a lot of stuff from the games yeah. and, and from the other sources. I mean, I mean uh, my visualization of, of Geralt was different as well. I, I you yeah. know, I prefer to see him as a more skinny guy, not the, yes. uh, a mountain, right? <laughs> like yes. Havel, but <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, like, you know, uh, an agile person, right? Not a... Yeah. Not a strong warrior of sorts, but yeah. yeah, yeah, it was my very first problem as well because he he has so much so big muscles that he cannot even move <laughs> yeah. sometimes, <laughs> which is really funny because yeah, Geralt is much more agile. If if you watch uh, any of the of the uh, video game trailers or even in the in the game, uh, he's much more much more uh, flexible and and. Um, and quicker and everything but um but it it kind of works uh because uh probably he's doing himself a lot of stunt as well um and um and and he and yeah he's it's just um it it works not maybe not all the time but um but most of the time yeah, this might be a hot take, but I actually prefer Zabrowski, who played in the Polish Hexa series, as Geralt over, over Henry Cavill. I need to watch it. You need to watch it, yes. It's, it's not as bad as people think, especially if you compare it with Netflix. It has its good points. Music is, music is excellent in that show. Not that much I can tell you. It's, it's very close to the music in The Witcher 3. And it's actually funny because Netflix originally offered that actor, um, you know, the the opportunity to uh, participate participate in the casting. They said, you know, we know you played Geralt in the Polish series. Would you yeah. like to send us, you know, a tape of of you uh, doing Geralt things? And the actor admitted that he thought about that, but then he forgot about it because he's you know too old to jump around and swing a sword. Yeah. Because yeah, I think probably. I think he's in his in his fifties now or like late forties, so uh, you know definitely past the prime girl age. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard to do um, a character like that when you are you are older and and probably he's just he's just not in his best shape anymore, or who knows maybe he's just not not doing that much physical. Uh, work if he's working in theater or in films because it's it's not that easy to to stay in shape and and uh and the shooting like this like like the witcher or even a marvel movie it's it's not so easy you need to train every day you have training every almost every day with your personal most of the time with your personal trainer and you are shooting 10 hours and after or before you go to the gym and it's just massive what they need to do so yeah it's 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 not that easy and some people are not after 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 some years it's just not your body not not capable to do that because mm. you ha you can have you can have um you can have uh, a mind for it that okay i want to do that but if your body tells no, then it's just your body tells no, and you have to stop. And it's it's not that easy for everyone. Yeah. In the end, he um, he is playing Geralt in in the Netflix show, but uh, in the Polish language version, he's dubbing Geralt. Oh. Mm -hmm. and oh I, I actually right. you know watched a whole interview with him, uh, and, and he said that. Initially, he was upset about the games because he wanted to voice Geralt in the games too, but then CDPR uh, did cast somebody else, a friend of him, who sounds very, very similar, by the way. Like, they have mm -hmm. a very similar accent. So he was upset about that, but then, yeah, you know, he, you know I got to, to, to play Geralt in the Netflix show, so take that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a rivalry between him and the other actor, both uh, known as Geralt yeah. in, in the Polish language version. Yeah, but it's so great that he got it, because it's... Um... It's a nice round that 
he played Geralt, and now he's he's not playing Geralt, but he's dubbing at least. So it's it's and the, and it's so nice from the the creators of Netflix that they that they asked him to to do the casting. It's it's really cool because, for example, um, um, in Assassin's Creed, um, the movie, uh, you know, the whole um, vibe of Assassin's Creed uh, is because of the movement of the assassins and everything and kind of all a lot of lot of uh, trailers for assassins creed was done by these guys these stunt guys who I'm working with and nobody asked them to participate in the movie and it's it's so sad because they these guys are were inventing the movement of the assassins these guys and and nothing and it's so sad and that's so nice, because why not? Because they were, they probably didn't want to play the main assassin because, of course, they 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 cannot. But um, but at least participate in it some some way, do some stunts because they are still active and really good. Why not? So yeah, yeah, just it's, just... it's a really nice thing. Yeah. Uh, from from Netflix and the yeah. creators, which... you know, it's it's a very nice gesture, and and sometimes, you know, these small acts of kindness can also yield unexpected results because um, there is there is a fan made Witcher movie. It's on YouTube. It was released like a year ago, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's actually really good because it it has professional actors, you know, professional lighting, costumes, everything, and the creators of that movie approached quite a few people who were involved in, in other Polish movies or in the original Hexer series. And, and you know, these people said, said, yeah, I can do it for free in my free time. And they even got the actor who played Jaskier Dandelion in the Hexer series to play Dandelion mm-hmm. in their movie. <laughs> nice. And, and, and I think it, it can work like that quite, quite often, that, you know, you recognize somebody's uh, work and, and you really want to see them in that specific role once again. And, and they, are, they are going to happily say yes. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, just a random shout out from the chat, actually, because we have uh, some viewers from Russia. Actually, a lot of viewers from Russia. So this fits uh, the theme that you mentioned as well with a guy sending you, uh, you know, some parcels. So, yeah, they are just saying that you're enchanting and they love you so much and they love your work. Thank you. Uh, Just as we do, obviously. But uh, this is coming from Russia, right? From Russia with love. Thank you so much. I love Russia. I would love to go there someday. Oh, me too. Has 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 actually lived in Russia for for a bit. So uh, really, that, yeah. Lucky you. Oh yeah, because you are you are a Russian teacher as well. You know, he's yeah. actually one of those guys who imported a Russian bride. So <laughs> <laughs> he fell into that trap. Yeah. No SMS. No registration. That worked for me, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, All but right. um, moving on, where are we <laughs> even when it comes to the question list? I'm, I'm yeah, complete... I think that yeah we, we got kind of lost in questions, actually, but uh, we talked about Hexer, right? The Polish original yeah. show, and uh, yeah. uh, we pointed out that uh, you haven't seen it. You're still yet to yeah. see it. It's going to be interesting to know your opinion afterwards, so uh, will, you know, feel, yeah. feel free to share it with us. <laughs> All right, but... Um, Maybe you would like to uh, share uh, your favorite, for example, moments, some scenes from either the books or the new series, the Netflix series that that you've seen and and they really were enjoyable for you. Oh my goodness! It's not. Or maybe the least favorite ones. Well, we know some of uh, the least favorite ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hmm. In the book, uh, I mean, not all the books I've read, but um, I, I, for example, in the book, the the broccolon part, I I really loved it. It was so, it and it was so, and in the book, it's so much better than in the in the series, unfortunately, yeah. and um, and it seems a little bit much more important in the rega- re- reading the book. Um, and it's a bit sad that they, the creators of the series, didn't think that. Um, um, 
yeah, it was it was really nice and um, and let's say hmm. and in the series, I think um, I think uh, especially uh, the early Jennifer parts because uh, well, first of all, because the actress is just wonderful. Uh, but also, um, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I wanted to ask this, is this the real, I mean, in the books, is the story of Yennefer the same, like in the series, or is there a story, a, or the story for, from, about Yennefer in no, the books there, at there, all? There's, there's no story, there, there's no background story of Yennefer in the yeah. books. Okay. There's, there's they, they so, uh, two moments now. where Geralt sees or like imagines parts of Yennefer's past that's really a couple mm -hmm. of sentence in, uh, sentences in the book and then later on in the novel she admits one thing and that's it so that, okay. literally it's less than, than three four sentences when it comes to her background okay so they whole they kind of made the whole things up yeah which that but that was what i was feeling that probably it's because it's really it's really movie style yeah or or something like that but it's it's so good i mean i i i really i really like the background of her and um and of course they needed a background for her because one he's she's one of the main characters and it's it's normal and um kind of and um yeah i think i think yeah, especially maybe that part when uh, when uh, she is sitting on the beach with the dead baby, uh, which was killed and uh, murdered. And yeah, I think it's it's really really uh, that's a really nice scene because um, of course she was crying, but after that, that um, when you die inside and you're just utterly sad and uh devastated and uh she's nailing it and that scene how she talks to is just a few few sentences and how how she talks to that that baby is just is just wonderful yeah all right yeah i think that we can agree that yennefer was one of the brightest actual appearances on the show for sure and uh, yeah. people were enjoying that and learning the background as well i think it's really cohesive as you mentioned it's it's really movie like but it makes sense right in this case yeah yeah in, in a way it had to be done because yeah. in the novels you can tell the whole story um from a certain perspective in in this case it's through um the eyes of Geralt, but it doesn't really work like that in television you can't you know, uh introduce important characters during season three so yeah. they so if Yennefer was to be a part of the story and she obviously was going to be part of the story, they had to come up with her background so that people know, okay, this is Yennefer and this is why she is doing all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this this whole motivation of her is just is just really heartbreaking as as a woman for me. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I can I can imagine. Um, to kind of finish this specific segment, I would like to ask one more question. Because you read a couple of books, you watched the series. Are there any characters from the Witcher world, you know, whether it's books, games, or series, that you would like to perform as, given the chance? Oriana, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if I, it would be, I think it would be the biggest achievement of my life if if. Uh, the creators of the TV series would put her in the movie and maybe ask uh, me to be on the casting or something. Um, but yeah, I think because I still don't know much about all the characters and and uh, probably after reading all the books I would be and playing the game, I would be able to give you more characters uh but right now um i'm re i'm really obsessed with the uh character of oriana um maybe yennefer too because she is really hard to play and uh but i don't think i would be oh 
There we go again. Once again, once again, Discord playing games with us. Okay. Yeah, and we are back. Discord again. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so Yennefer, uh, but I don't think I would be doing a better job than uh, than the actress who's playing it now, who's playing her now. So, so, so yeah, Oriana. <laughs> Actually, there it's it's a spoiler of sorts, but there there is um, some scenes in the in the books in Toussaint in Beauclair, so you never know, you never know. Yeah, maybe maybe they yeah. will fit Oriana in there. Yeah, we'll see. I I don't know what I know that the main agreement is to to put the book mostly in the TV series. Who knows, maybe. Oh, they introduced so many new characters that one Oriana here and there, it's not going to matter that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I don't know how how much they are cutting off the the uh, video game mm. characters from, um, from the TV series. It's just, I think it's a, it's an agreement also with the, with Sapkowski, the day author, and I don't know. Actually, the uh, the series has nothing to do with the games because the games take place after the events of the books. They are mm -hmm. a sequel of sorts. So uh, everything you see in the games, it's just CDPR's creativity. It's their own yeah. writing uh, and and their yeah. own story. Uh, and and the series yeah. is based on the novels as written by Sapkowski. So uh, yeah. So technically, Oriana is not supposed to be in there. But then again, I know. Uh, in, if you watch the series, there's a lot of characters that were not supposed to be in there and yet ended up being in the series. So you never know. Creative freedom yeah. can be can be very broadly understood. I know. So Yeah. We'll see. I mean it's even fine if nothing like that happens. So Okay, yeah. um we actually crossed the two hour mark. So the question for me yeah. uh for 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 uh for me is going to be um do you still feel like uh, answering a couple of questions or are we running somewhere? I, uh, I know that fiance with a dog are probably just waiting on the <laughs> on the stairs, just willing to get home. Prob no, probably he is going to get home around 2 p.m. So maybe half an hour. Uh, we still have half an hour or something. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so let's go with the more uh, personal questions or you know questions about your job. Um, we already talked a little bit about how you got to do uh, motion capture, but you know, can you can you can you highlight like the, the brightest moment of, moments of of how it all started? And is it something you prefer over the more traditional approach to acting, or you'd like to do both? Ideally, because you said you were also involved in theater. Yeah, um, I studied uh, theater acting. Um, mostly, we did a few. We tried to do some films uh, as an exam or something, but um, but yeah, I'm well. I'm on stage uh, um, for a lot of time now because I started it uh, when I was about ten, and also um, I was always kind of interested in this because when I was still in nursery school. I was doing um, poem competitions or poem telling competitions, and I won those. So, so yeah, it's kind of through my whole life, and uh, and I started to do acting, amateur acting in an amateur group when I was uh, when I was ten, and uh, and um, and I start because. I was afraid to uh, get to uh, acting school the first, so uh, I was studying in a university, literature and stuff, and um, and yeah, uh, and then I decided to okay, let's try to do this acting. And when uh, it 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 was a three year course, and uh, in my last year, uh, one of my friends uh, found me that. Okay, I recommended you in a, to a company because they are doing some uh, animation stuff or something like that. I don't really know. They are going to call you. Okay, animation 
what it has to do with the actor. Okay. So they called me and they called me in for a casting or something. Uh, and um, it was it was really nice because we were doing casting for the crew uh, at, for Puppet Works. And uh, I was sitting um, in a table and there was a guy sitting... Uh, uh, in front of me, and they showed they showed me an animatic, which now I know what an animatic is. But that time, I was I was just seeing slightly animated stuff, and everything was green on it, uh, uh, gray on it. And okay, I don't know what this is. Okay, this is the scene, kind of like they want this. Okay, let's try. And and I was just I had to I got the uh script uh those few lines uh before the casting and i had to say those lines to that guy who was sitting in front of me and he's he he told me that okay i'm going to be just sit here and say you nothing i won't answer or anything you need to convince me to uh cooperate with you because i was playing an fbi agent and uh and it was okay. It was something really new and, and not uh, a common thing and common casting uh, situation. Okay, let's do that. And um, and it was really nice because there was a click in my head. And when I because the, the very first beginning I was doing horrible. And um, after two lines or something, there was a click in my head that okay, I need to do this and. Something just happened, so they they chose me for that job, um, and um, and yeah, I, and I was so I started it nine years ago, and uh, and I was doing motion capture while I was doing uh, theater uh, acting. I was working for a year as a puppeteer in a puppet theater. Uh, I was doing some small um, me in. In series, TV series, uh, some short films, and also we were doing a short film for for my uh, fiance a few years ago. So I tried out a lot of things. I was first AD, for example, in that. So, um, but motion capture always came back and back and back because, um, you know, in creating a 3D animation, a 3D animated movie, uh, acting part is the, is the tiniest, tiny bit. Uh, because everything happens before that and after that. Uh, and you are just helping out the animators to have uh, better uh, data for your movement. And so they don't have to find out how to animate that character. It's just a big help for them. And um, and so your job is, my job is important, but not the most important part, I think, in uh, the whole motion capture. And sometimes it's really sad that, uh, that the, not the right person are getting the, the, the main recognition uh, because those animators who are working there and, and everyone else the, for the lighting, for for the environmental, for um, for animating the hair and the uh, the costumes and everything is just it's just a huge thing because I started to learn animation last year, just a few lessons and it's it's really really hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Even if you are 3D animation is is a different thing than 2D animation, but it's really it's not that easy. And um, and um, so yeah, it's uh, motion capture is coming back all the time, and I can say that I I enjoy it much more uh, than theater. Uh, I love making movies, films, live action stuff, um, but I enjoy also the parts when I'm not in front but behind the camera as well. For example, a few weeks ago, I did a short film for a friend, and I was uh, a script supervisor on it, and it's and it's a different stuff, but I I I love that too. So, but yeah, motion capture, I love to say I think and think that that's my main thing. Um, 
and um, and maybe in a way that not just acting, but going in the way that mostly in the future as a first AD or some kind of supervising thing, but it's not a thing. Maybe one day directing, it should be fun because I understand a lot about motion capture. And for example, when I was working on on the Moon Knight, it was it was uh, it was a really good thing that um, that I was working on the on the VFX department because I I understood everything really quickly because I'm familiar with the how to create stuff from nothing with 3D. And uh, of course, uh, VFX is a little bit different, but not so much. And we were shooting uh, motion capture also. Um, and and I was in charge with all of that. And I knew more about motion capture than uh, a few people in our department. And it was it was it was weird that okay, you're the you're the mockup girl. You know everything about it. <laughs> I lost. And it was okay. So it was it was fun. But yeah. So that's my, I like I like to think that that's my main thing. All right, and it's it's actually answering one of the questions we had in in chat about yeah. you being interested in some other fields of the production, and we can see that you are, and and this is great. I, this is great because I, I what do you think about uh, actors going into you know that direction? Because there are some actors going into you know directing, for example, production, and so on. So do you feel that this is something like natural or, or does it come individually with a person? I think uh, mostly person because, for example, um, directing, it would be nice, but I'm scared of it. I'm mm. really scared of it because uh, it requires a lot of stuff uh, to see and understand. Um, Maybe in motion capture it's a little bit different and uh, and it's a little bit easier because there are there are limits you need to think about because a lot of other stuff you are i mean you are mostly need to concentrate on um, not so not that you not, you doesn't need to concentrate on that much thing than in a live action movie mm. um, maybe but I'm not sure uh, but um but yeah um for a lot of actors, it's coming kind of natural to start to uh, to, to be a director as well. Uh, even if I mean, uh, and mostly when they are um, interested in not just the acting part, but um, but in a wider range, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, acting also has a lot of different aspects and. Um, and even I mean, in Hungary, there are a lot of lot of directors who were, who were actors uh, before, especially in theater. Uh, even there are l very very young young uh, actors became directors. Uh, it's a it's a common thing right now, and they are doing really nice things because they have a lot of energy and a lot of creativity. And um, sometimes you cannot express it only in acting because if uh, you are not so lucky in that year, and uh, you are just having one new uh, play um, to do. It's it's not enough, uh, and you will need to uh, play again those ones which were already on the plate for a few years. You have left with a lot of creative energy, and you need to put it somewhere. And usually, if they have a chance, they put it in in directing. All right. Perfect. I. But, you know, when it comes to other fields of, of film production, I, I have another question. And I hope it's not going to come uh, come across as rude because motion capture, um, in comparison to more traditional acting, at least in my opinion or my vision of it, has an age limit. At, 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 <clears throat> at a certain age, you won't be able to perform as well as when you were younger. Is that something you are aware of? Is that something you plan for in the future? Or am I completely wrong here? Um... Yeah, we can tell that there is kind of an age limit. Uh, with age, you, yeah, but it's also in in theater the same. That, uh, for example, uh, there are not so much uh, 
characters to play around 40 and uh, for a woman uh there are not mu- not much characters uh with that age uh in plays um and motion capture yeah kind of the same because uh you're losing flexibility you're losing uh muscles maybe if you are having kids it's also different after it going back to do some really heavy physical stuff it's not that easy um for for uh for men, it's maybe it's a little bit easier because um, because that range can go a little bit further than maybe for for women. But it also depends on you as well, because I was working with actors uh, who did motion capture and they were around fifty, and they were just cast on uh, on that kind of character, and that's it. So it doesn't really matter if and and uh, and I have a good friend. Uh, she's a great actor and she's around sixty, and uh, and uh, she really loves to do lo- would love to do motion capture because uh, she's still a physical actor as well because she was a dancer before and she did acrobatic when she was younger and uh to to this day she's dancing and stretching and moving a lot so she of course they won't cast her for example a 20 year old character or something but it's it's uh, it's not impossible to do a 20 year old character as a uh 30 plus or 40 plus uh actor i also did uh child characters a lot all right. characters. It, it definitely yeah. answer, answers my question. Uh, as I said, I, I probably came across as a little bit ignorant in that matter, but, uh, but I happily stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, All we right, have so... less than 15 minutes. So I guess one more question and then the shameless plug. Which yeah, is another I guess segment. <laughs> I guess it makes sense uh, because we actually answered most of the chat questions as well because I was trying to yeah. squeeze them here and there. So yeah. So Which one are gonna... mm, I definitely want to ask the last question that we have on the list, but out of pure curiosity, I'm going to ask: Have you watched Arcane? Oh yes, I did. I loved it. It's <laughs> it's it's fantastic. What they did, how they did, how it looks, animation, everything is just is just really cool it's and and, and how do you feel about there not actually being any motion capture because uh, i watched a couple of interviews with guys from uh from the company that uh, produced the show and they said everything is just 3d models we, we didn't do any motion capture whatsoever there's there's no real actors behind any of it i don't mind it because these are much more cartoony characters than an actor would play so mm. you as an act i mean a real person you cannot play it's the really hard you you can you can play of course cartoony characters but after the animators have to do a lot so fine with me they did a really great job i don't care <laughs> and just keep doing it because because it's 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 huge and and it's it's wonderful what they did yeah we are in yeah. the same opinion yeah. absolutely love yeah. the show yeah yeah they nailed it with every part, every character mm-hmm. is and how it looks. Oh my goodness, I'm it's amazing. I started to learn drawing a year ago and and it's just it's just wonderful what they did there. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> wow to you guys all there who who were participating in it because you did a great job. All right, so now we can move to the actual last question, Hesser. I'm going to hand it uh, over to you. Yeah, I finally, finally, because my curiosity has been killing me since the very beginning. So I want to know more about your future plans. Tell us about oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I would love to uh, settle down in mostly in gaming industry and um, and settle down in in a company uh, who can use all my talents as maybe a coordinator or uh, maybe a first ad in motion capture that would be the the biggest achievement to to be a full-time first ad for motion capture uh in in a studio so um 
probably not here in Hungary because there are limits uh, here. But um, I don't know, maybe maybe Berlin or maybe Sweden. But the, but the but the but the right now my greatest 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 um, dream is one day work with Vera Digital, who and they did um, you know uh, Lord of the Rings and and a lot of stuff. So yeah, moving to New Zealand and work. Oh that man, would be, well, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need to learn a lot. For that, but I'm open for that. So yeah, so yeah. Perfect. Kind of that. Perfect. All right. Um. Thanks. And um. Yeah. Now it's time for shameless plug. And before you think it's something weird, it's actually a short segment where where we can you can promote your your own person and your own content. So, if our audience wishes to find you online, where can they do so? Well, I have uh, an Instagram profile, uh, which is I'm much more kind of much more active on Instagram than on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram uh, on Ju dot Rats, which is kind of my name. Maybe Hesser can put it on. <laughs> on We're thing already on that. Thank you, thank <laughs> you, and um, um, I'm kind of active on that and you can find a lot of uh, stuff of my re i mean past works or uh how what i did uh and i'm also on uh twitter alphabet the green hey because i'm a huge wicked fan as well <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah alphabet the green on on twitter uh i there i usually um post a lot of things in Hungarian as well. So sorry about that because there's a kind of big um, Hungarian community uh, there and friends and everything. Uh, but I try to, uh, the main things I try to share, uh, of course, in English there as well. So, so yeah, those are the most achievable places to find me. All right, uh, Juji. Thanks for being here with us. I really, really appreciate it. It's been it's been great so talking much. to you. And now, um, Camille, it's your time to shine. Well, uh, I, I decided to skip uh, my shameless plug today, and I'm I'm just gonna put more stress on following Susie's work, and I'm gonna post all of that in chat right now. And whoever is gonna listen to us on Spotify or any other platform, uh, you can find uh, all the links on our um, channel as well on Twitter and you will be able to find the links on YouTube as well so please do that uh, go dig for it and, and follow Suzy absolutely follow Suzy wherever you can um, I'm only going to add for myself that once again this episode is going to be uploaded on YouTube, Spotify and other platforms either tonight or tomorrow you can also follow us on Twitter where we share all the other links if you want to get access to these links right now you can just type exclamation mark podcast that should work I think and with that being said, guys, thank you once again for the podcast. Thank you for the episode. It's been a pleasure. And obviously, chat, thanks for staying with us and asking all the amazing questions. We'll see you guys later. Follow these guys on Twitter and everywhere. Follow these guys because they are great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.